Hello, good evening, Malaysia and followers from around the world. We are pleased to have with us Dr. Eng Yiping, the Managing Director of Tome Consolidated Berhad. He has been the MD since 2006. Tome, as we know, is a brand name in uh, jewelry uh, retail. Eng has a Bachelor in Business Administration and a Master's in Business Administration from Iowa State University in the US. He is also actively involved in the Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industries, and as well as in community uh, services and welfare. Okay, uh, welcome on board, uh, Dato. Uh, we'd like to uh, ask you questions about how the uh, jewelry business is like, and that uh, our interest here today is actually about gold. We live in an age of uncertainty. The price of oil, the price of commodities have all taken a plunge. And it is said that no matter what kind of currency that you hold, all this paper money can burn <laughs> or can, can depreciate. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the best form of investment? You're an expert. Is this buying of uh, jewelry good enough as an investment? Or do you think that it should be gold billion? And what's the difference between gold billion, gold bar, gold coins? And if we buy this uh, gold bars, where do we buy it? I do not know where to buy it, for example. Do we buy it over the counter or do we give Tommy a phone call and say, I want to buy this bar? How much is this worth? And mm -hmm. after buying, where do I store it? Can you please share with us? Okay, okay. generally, uh, uh, as you know, you know, gold has always been a very good uh, uh, hedge against inflation. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it has for many years been an important part of an investment portfolio for a lot of investors. And it has performed relatively well, especially in time of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. You know, with the fall of Lehman Brothers in 2008, mm -hmm. it has, there has been an increase in awareness of the need to diversify one investment into gold. Mm -hmm. You know, this has, since 2008, there has been a trend of investing into gold. And with the amount of qualitative easing around the world uh, by the central banks and also the suppressed low interest rate environment, yeah. gold has been gaining popularity again uh, as investors are now increasingly worried on their investment and the value of their savings or the, um, the money that they are holding. No, based on my understanding uh, from the reports from World Gold Council, demand of gold investment actually accelerated by 5.7 times mm. in quarter two, 2020 versus same quarter 2019. So I, I also see that, it, uh, you know, we have been reading reports. I must admit, I'm not expert in gold price, <laughs> you know, uh, but we also see that uh, uh, the in August 2020, uh, Warren Buffett, uh, the well-known investment guru, yeah. you know, who have well known for not interest in gold, mm. have actually invested US dollar 563 million mm. in very gold. So you can see that uh, there is there is a surging interest in gold. I think mainly due to the the the, the, the reason that I've given earlier, yes. you know, the, yes. uh, the yeah. QE and, and mm. the low interest rate and the worry about uh, money de de devaluation, yeah. etc. So, so that that is the 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 movement of gold price. Uh, I think the next few, the next one or two years. Now back to the question on uh, where can you buy gold? You know, mm. uh, where, how do you invest in a gold? I think uh, of course there are few options that one can have. Uh, one option is, of course, to buy gold securities. Mm -hmm. Example of gold securities will be like ETF funds. I see. Or, or you can buy mining company stocks or even gold futures. Mm -hmm. Now, second option will be to open a gold account in a bank. And just like saving accounts, like you save in gold. Uh, but there is the third option that's to buy physical gold. Mm -hmm. One can buy gold bar, gold coin, gold bullion, gold wafer, or even gold jewelries. Mm -hmm. okay? 
But in my opinion, the best option is to buy physical gold yeah. as there is no counterparty risk involved for investing into physical gold. So where do you get them? You know, you can definitely come to, you know, in Malaysia, you can get gold, gold bar, gold bullion in banks. Mm. Uh, but the problem is uh, there's limited banks that sell mm. and uh, most of the time they don't uh, buy back. Uh, I see. Now, the, in Malaysia, most of the customer will buy from jewelers like us. Mm -hmm. uh, in Tome, we sell kilo bar, we sell uh, 500 gram bars. We even sell gold wafer, gold coins, ranging from one gram to 500 gram or 10 ounce, 311 gram. So, so we, we offer a wide varieties actually. We, we in fact, Tome offer the widest varieties of mm -hmm. gold bar, gold bullion. Uh, gold coins because we represent uh, we, we, we sell bars from palm trees, we sell from Canadian mint, uh, the maple leaf uh, we sell gold coins from uh, Perth mint uh, these are all reputable uh, mint, mint or bullion producer and we also sell like for example the, the China panda mm. uh, etc. So, so we carry a full range you know, uh, and the price that we offer are very transparent. We, we have a gold price uh, listed in our website. So basically, any, we, we have our buy and sell price. So customer can just uh, either walk in our store or they can also check mm. online to, to see the price. Yeah. So basically, that took, when we talk about uh, gold uh, external traded funds, uh, it's something like a stock market, unlike a physical gold bar where you can actually hold it. So uh, can I say that the price of the gold bars or the uh, gold material that you sell will be based on, is it, a, is it like a stock market where the price of gold is like a traded on a daily basis according to those price? How does it work? Okay, for, for, for us, for kilo bar and, and we call cast bar, mm -hmm. uh, yes, it's traded like... Uh, international gold price. In mm -hmm. fact, generally gold price uh, mark to market. Mm -hmm. So the, the price fluctuate every minute, every second okay. when oh. up and down. Right. So when customer come in, they fix their price, they, they, they ask for the buying price, we mm -hmm. quote them. And uh, if they confirm one hour later, the price might have, might have moved. Okay. So that is the case. But on a retail level, when you count, go for the smaller pieces or even gold jewelry, we don't move the we don't move the gold price uh, that often. We will monitor as long as it's within range. We don't adjust mm -hmm. the gold price. Uh, but once it fall below certain uh, percentage or or move upward certain percentage, we will adjust the retail price accordingly. Can, can I have an idea? Because you mentioned about the different uh, price of gold according to their weight. So if uh, I were to buy a gold bar or a gold leaf. Uh, the prices range from what to what? Okay, today uh, one gram will cost you approximately uh, two seventy. You know, I mean, if you are talking about gold bar, then probably mm. around two seven, two sixty five, or, or two sixty. It depends on the type of bars because the premium actually varies from from, from different product. Mm. Uh, to you know, one kilo will cost you. About two hundred and seventy thousand or two thousand two hundred sixty-five thousand. Okay. Yeah. So after I buy these uh, gold bars, and mm -hmm. that uh, where do I store them? Obviously, they like, keeping at home uh, with a limited uh, safe box uh, mm -hmm. would not be advisable. Uh, mm -hmm. Where can one keep this? Uh, bus besides, let's say you have a okay. let's say you have a what do you call it deposit box in the banks, uh, but. Uh, it's more difficult to rent these uh, instruments in banks anymore. So where can I keep these gold bars? What if you know in, in the old days when when we ask uh, you know if you ask my grandparents mm. where are they going to keep the gold that they have, they will tell you they'll put in a mino mino <laughs> thing or they can't you know yeah. under the bed and so forth. But this don't happen anymore. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and, you know, there are, of course, you, you mentioned, you know, uh, there earlier that uh, 
Yeah. One can put in the safe, you know. If yeah. I find a customer that uh, put in safe, but I don't know where they keep their safe, they won't let me know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there, there are customers that buy and uh, keep in the bank, you know, uh, safety deposit box. But actually, there's a lot of uh, professional work around today yeah. that you can render their uh, render their service, and yeah. all these are uh, insured. Uh, you know, you can buy interest on, on, uh, for this storage. Of course, I think uh, <clears throat> in in the case of Tome, you can always discuss with us okay. the arrangement of custody service with a nominal fee. Like, okay, oh, fair enough. Okay, so these are sort of like a private uh, safe uh, deposit box kind of thing. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, you mentioned gold maple leaf. Is this a uh, what do you call it? A uh, patented copyright name for a gold product from Canada? Okay, that was three. Mm. Uh. uh Canadian gold maple leaf is mm. a gold bullion mm. that is issued uh, annually by the government of Canada. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is produced by Royal Canada Mint, and in in uh, this gold maple leaf is actually a legal tender in Canada. I see. So so not everybody can produce. It's only the mint that they can produce. So in Malaysia, Tommy is selling um, uh, maple leaf coins for mm. both gold and silver, and uh, well, anyone that's interested can check our web store or visit our outlets for, for more information. Uh, you mentioned Panda from China, which is something that I'm not uh, familiar. Can you uh, elaborate a bit on this? Well, uh, Panda coin is, uh, they, they issue every year or so. Uh, we, that, you know, that they, every year they will come up with collections uh, mm -hmm. of different sizes. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, one ounce are the popular one. Uh, we, what what happened is uh, we are also sell, uh, selling some of the coins because that you know we the customer in among the profile of our customers there are collectors of different coins. Oh, I see. And okay. Certain customer also like to have varieties. You know, although it's an investment, uh, as a collector they like to see that uh, they don't only own maple leaf, palm trees. They also like to have. Canada, uh, Perth Mint and, and this Panda, for example. I see. You know, there are customers that also look for, you know, the eagle of, uh, from the US as well. Yeah. Uh, what is the difference uh, in the terms of uh, 24K gold, 100% uh, gold? Uh, what is the uh, difference when we talk about this kind of uh, carrot? Okay, now, 24K is, uh, I think in, in Europe, they use 24K, 22K, 18k or 9k that that's how uh, the european uh, standard is but in malaysia standard uh, when i say malaysia standard is the government standard mm -hmm. we use 999 916 uh, 750 and uh, for example 375 okay so actually we are referring to the gold content mm -hmm. in in the gold as you can see from a 999 means that is almost 100% gold, there's no alloy in it. Mm -hmm. uh, 916, of course, 91.6% gold content. I see. But it's 91.66% mm -hmm. gold content and uh, balance will be silver or other metal, mm -hmm. you know. So the difference in, in this, uh, uh, other than the, the, the purity, the purity of the gold, the gold content, uh, is also to about the hardness. So different different gold content. You know, the higher the gold content, the softer is the gold. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, through alloying, we can adjust the color. For example, if you want to have a rose gold, so you see rose gold uh, is pinkish in color. So normally you will have more iron in it. You know, uh, or, or if, if the Europeans they like. They like to have uh, 18 karat gold, but it's more greenish. So they will put more copper, for example. So, so the alloying will affect the color of the gold. Uh, right. It will affect the, the toughness of the gold. And also we, because of that, then it affects the design as well. So certain thing cannot be produced in 24 karat mm -hmm. and certain thing uh, can only produce uh, in 18 karat. Uh, that told me, uh, besides sell, selling a gold, it's also uh, a designer and mm. a manufacturer of this uh, gold jewel. Now, um, 
where do you source your gold uh, material from? Which country or which area? Okay, generally in Malaysia for all jewelers, uh, there are a few options that you can go. Okay, uh, of course we, there's bullion trader that import gold uh, bullion overseas in a, in bulk. They are like banks, you know, in Malaysia banks, a uh, couple of banks do uh, do uh, selling of bullion to to the trade, but I think the bulk of the gold today, there's a lot of uh, local refined bars. We call it local refined bars because uh, like Tommy, we are also a refiner. Mm -hmm. uh, we buy scrap from pawn shop. We have customer mm -hmm. trading mm -hmm. uh, that we, we take back. We refine the gold. We melt down. We refine the gold into pure gold to 9999. And that's where we re, uh, re it, we put alloy to it and make it 916 and go into manufacturing. So it's either bullion or local refine. I local see. refine can be from, from scrap, from gold mines, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I thought that the China is now the largest producer of gold. It has uh, overtaken other countries uh, previously. I think like previously it was like South Africa. Uh, mm -hmm. Why is now China the biggest producer of gold? And where do they use this gold and what do they turn this gold into? I think China as a, as a, a bigger, one of the biggest consumer of gold jewelry today. I see, okay. Or gold in investment also hmm. uh, have, have increased because of over the years, they are, they are, the volume for them have increased. I see. So it makes sense for them to invest on uh, on, on new mines in uh, to increase their capital expenditure on exploration of gold mine mm -hmm. and also to invest in infrastructure so so the the production of of gold in china have actually today have uh, is is amount to about 11% of the gold production of the world i see so the, the re i think the main reason is because the main reason behind is because they have the the there is a demand of gold within the country but in terms of gold reserves uh it is still being kept by the banks and the in the us right yes, yes. Okay. now uh, given the increasing uh, cost of uh, production the mm. price of uh, gold has gone up as a as a, as a raw source of material production cost has gone up when someone buys uh, jewelry at your shops or any shops in town uh, would it be correct to say that uh, buying uh, jewelry now is more expensive than in the past? Well, yes. I mean, we gold price is mark to market. Mm -hmm. So with the increase in in the pr price of raw material, definitely the gold jewel price will have to increase in mm -hmm. tandem. Yeah. So, but see in uh, in in Malaysia uh, and and. And probably Singapore or India, you know, uh, mm. most of the jewelry that are sold are of high content. High content means uh, 916, 999. You know, those uh, 18 carat, 9 carat, those or, or 750, 375, these are all lower content. Mm. So, so of course, when the gold price went up, everything go up, but it went up proportionally, but mm. the gold, because of the high gold content, 916 or 999 price will be very high today. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so people are buying more jewelry today because uh, you know not only I mean I will ask people to buy jewelry as and but it can be used as uh, accessories okay. and also at the meantime you are also investing in gold. Right. So that is the beauty part of gold. I think no other accessories are able to give that kind of value. Yeah. But just now, Dato Sri, just now you mentioned about one question you asked about the the reserve of gold yeah okay actually us do i, I, I always tell my friend you know us do hold 8000 if i'm not mistaken 8000 about 8000 plus ton of gold mm. uh, making them the highest yes. gold reserve mm. country in the world mm. but actually uh, in my opinion there is a lot of gold in uh, how would i say uh, there's in my view, there's in China and India have a sizable amount of physical gold at the household level. I see. Okay. All because right. Because if you look at data from World Gold Council, mm. 
China and India actually top the list with about 900 tons and 700 tons respectively okay. uh, on, on the consumer of gold demand, consumer gold demand. So over the years, I think in the household level, there's a lot of gold in this country. Yes. By I think by population size, demographic size, and sure consumption and volume, it is logical. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, therefore, the when we talk about gold reserve, is the gold reserve by central bank is one thing, mm -hmm. but the gold circulating in the in that household. country, mm -hmm. in the household, yeah, is is a lot more in in these two countries. Thank you. And that's when uh, someone goes to Dubai, then they see this gold market. They see so mm -hmm. much uh, gold. Uh, what's the price and quality of uh, this kind of uh, bulky? It's like all over, like Pasamalam kind of okay. uh, gold that's on this place. Okay, uh, talking about Dubai, I think mm. traditionally there has been a perception that uh, gold price in Dubai is lower. Mm -hmm. But actually, uh, that is not totally true. Mm -hmm. uh, it's incorrect to say that uh, gold found in Dubai is cheaper mm -hmm. uh, because. Dubai has traditionally been a gold and jewelry hub for the world wholesale player. Mm -hmm. So people from India, from Africa, you know, Asia, all over the world, they go there to buy gold yeah, yeah. Uh, and go back to distribute. You know, it's because of the volume, their okay. transaction volume is bigger. Uh, they have the economy of scale. So the physical premium and the workmanship tends to be lower. I see. Uh, that is what, but gold being gold, is mark to market. The gold price okay. cannot change. Okay. Uh, so, however, with the implementation of GST now in mm. Dubai, I'm not sure if the price is still cheaper than Malaysia. Yeah. Although I can see that uh, as a consumer, uh, when I go around uh, shops looking for to buy uh, gold as an accessory, okay, I knew I noticed that, that there's a lot of difference in terms of let's say we go to uh, these uh, uh, shops run by Chinese. Uh, shops run by Indian uh, jewelers. And if you go to Thailand, you also see a different kind of uh, design. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of it are really uh, very big, you know, a big gold, you know, and that it mm -hmm. looks very uh, strong. Uh, while uh, some go by uh, design-wise, okay, uh, the ties are very good in their design. And that, um, uh, but in terms of uh, value, okay, uh, is there any difference? Uh, is it, it looks big, but it's hollow, or they're all more or less the same because you finally go down by the uh, the, the kind of gold that's used and also the uh, the quality of it. How, how do you measure it? Okay, so when we talk about gold jewelry, of course, then it depends on which market you are appealing to. You mm -hmm. know, in Malaysia, we have our Chinese third business, mm -hmm. we have um, uh, our Malay uh, customers, we have Indian customers. And you know, because of the different background, then mm -hmm. uh, the preference can be different. You know, even tourists that come to Malaysia from different countries also have different preference. So at the end of the day, a lot depends on who we are selling to. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, if it's the, the, the price of the item really depends on number one, the type of gold. Mm -hmm. You know, gold, gold value from the biggest part of the price that you pay okay then of course then you know whether it's chunky tea small a lot is all on the craftsmanship you know because gold price have gone up so much mm -hmm. today a lot of the items so uh, they are hollow mm -hmm. because if it's not hollow then you have to pay a lot yeah. of money for, for yeah. that piece of jewelry yeah. and and you know because of technology today hollow item can be very durable I see. You know, those days we say, oh, we don't want hollow because it, it, it can change form very easily, you know, especially yeah. for things that yeah. you wear on, in the hand, you know, a bangle or bracelet, mm -hmm. you know. So, so, but with technology, I think that is a lot of uh, improvement. Uh, so, customer will go for hollow item, but at the meantime, uh, half. You know, and then at the same time, then you talk about the design and craftsmanship. Uh, like you mentioned that Thailand, you know, Thailand, for example, Prima Gold, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, we are the sole distributor of Prima Gold in Malaysia. And basically, Prima Gold items do have their, uh, what do you call that, uh, unique, uniqueness in, in the jewelry making. Mm. Uh, every piece is handcrafted. So, 
So definitely with that, then you have to pay a higher premium mm -hmm. on the workmanship for, for the craftsmanship, you know. But go bingo, the bulk value of, of that item is still the gold price. Yes. You know that, uh, Dato, when we look at Asia, let's say Malaysia, Singapore, or Thailand, we can see this uh, jewelry shop uh, very strongly in your eyes. Gold everywhere, and then the uh, salesman is sitting down there. But if you go to Europe or US, you actually do not see this kind of uh, uh, jewelry shops uh, around. Uh, how do they sell it in the US? They seem to be less auspicious, and uh, it is less, the physical form is less. Uh, how do they sell gold in uh, US or Europe? Okay, before I touch that, that topic, that uh, top, your answer, uh, what I want to say is, in, 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 in the Asian countries, we, we always perceive gold as investment. Yeah. In the European countries, they treat it more like uh, accessories. Mm -hmm. That is why, first of all, the, the, character, the gold heritage in China, Malaysia, you know, we are all high heritage gold. Yeah. Uh, same like Thailand, you know, mm -hmm. it's always 20, 21, 22, 24 karat. Whereas in the European country, they normally go for and mostly below 18k as okay. low as even 9k. Mm. So that, that is the first, there's a difference. So when they are selling as an accessory, mm. solely as an accessory, of course, you will talk about uh, display. I mean, you're, you're not, people buy as accessory, they don't, they don't treat it as an investment. And I don't think there's a lot of buyback in those countries. Mm. Whereas in our in, in, in Asian countries, in Malaysia, in Singapore, in Thailand, you know, even Hong Kong, Taiwan, you see people trade in their gold. Mm. You know, they trade in for jewelry, they trade in for money as well. So so that is a difference. Uh, uh, in Malaysia, and because of the perception that gold is not only an accessory here, it's also as an investment. Mm. So the demand, if you can see, for gold jewelry is much higher than this country, when they're from, than US or, or, or in the European countries. You know, in US, customers that want to buy gold, they only buy gold, invest mm. gold, they only buy gold bullet. Yeah. So it's, it's, very, it's very clear. You know. Whereas in Malaysia, you have the options. You can buy jewelry you can buy bullion you know of course the premium is different but you don't buy an accessory that you can sell back for money later if the gold price went up you might even make money you know you yes. can get that in other countries also i think uh, for asians it's a very uh, cultural thing like uh, we even uh, when we give a uh, chinese new year when you use uh, orange we use the word that sounds like a uh, gold yes. and uh, for wedding gifts uh, for auspicious occasions, uh, for birthdays, and for the for the birthday of a new born baby, it's always uh, revolves around gold. I think that that perhaps give uh, even a stronger uh, uh, perception to to gold. Okay, now uh, for younger customers now, uh, what kind of design do they look for? Do they look for something that's more subtle, uh, better design, or uh, what are the preference? Uh, in Tobey, what we can see is, uh, you know, we are, for example, we are licensing for Hello Kitty. Mm -hmm. So those kinds of product are very sought after. Uh, uh, hollow product, uh, simple, simple in design. Uh, but uh, of course, there are also, you know, for, for the younger generation, uh, they, don't, they normally don't go very loud, you know. Okay. But... Uh, uh, unlike the traditional, you know, traditionally we do a lot of diamond cutting, all those things, you know, very shiny. But current, uh, we can see the younger generation go for plain design, oh, okay. uh, polished surface, you know, and uh, uh, they, they will, it, it, how would I say, they will, depends on, depending on the budget as well, actually. Of course, yeah. Because normally the younger generation don't have a such a big budget. Normally, our business, mm. the biggest, biggest uh, purchaser normally are for, more for gifting or okay. weddings. You know, okay. so, so depending on the purpose they will buy. You know, yeah. uh, that people buy a, a dragon and phoenix bangle mm. for the wedding, but they don't wear after that day. You know, that yes, yes. bangle is mainly for. It, it's like you say, it's a culture. You mm. know, but for wearing purpose, normally they will go for simple design in short. I'm curious, 
uh, there's all this uh, big hype about online, uh, buying things over online, um, but do people really buy gold online or do you actually must go to your shops to physically look at it? Okay, uh, since MCO, actually we have seen the surge in the purchasing online, definitely. Uh, even after after MCO, you know, before we go back to MC, MCO, we, we continue to see a surge in our sales in our online store. I think the trend of buying online is irreversible. Mm -hmm. uh, but having said that, uh, the traditional uh, store still form a, a most part of our business. Mm -hmm. You know, I can see, we, we feel that uh, the younger generation are more receptive to buying online, especially when you buy on e -tome, you know, that you are buying from Tome, the, the product uh, uh, quality is assured. And if you have any problem or you need to, any service that require you can go back to the shop. Mm -hmm. So I think online, there's a search, but I still feel that people want to meet, people still want to try. Mm -hmm. People, you know, because for example, for wedding, I feel that it's not just buying online, but it's also the, the experience that you've gone through together buying that piece of jewelry, yes. the, the memories, I think. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, does the Valentine's Day, does it uh, help in terms of uh, sales for Malaysia? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, Valentine's Day appeal more to the younger, younger generation. Mm -hmm. uh, less uh, married couple celebrate Valentine's Day. <laughs> 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 so, so, so it really depends on occasion, you know, but yeah. for Valentine's Day, yes, the younger generation do celebrate and our sales normally search a lot during Valentine's Day. What about Chinese New Year? Yeah, same. Again, different tradition appeal to different people, you know, but Chinese New Year, our, you know, generally the, the parents will buy uh, for the children mm -hmm. uh, a new piece of jewelry. You know, Chinese culture, I think same same for our Muslim Malay culture. So, mm -hmm. you know, New Year you have to buy new clothes, you have to buy new jewelry, and so forth. So we see either trade in or buy new items. Yeah. So during the recent Hari Raya, I suppose that most of our Malay friends uh, yeah. still spend a lot of money uh, to buy gold from uh, from Tome during this season, despite the COVID nineteen situation. Yeah, in fact, uh, we were very pleased with the with the market response after mm -hmm. MCO, you know, starting from May, I think 4th of May, progressively our shop opened. Mm -hmm. And because Raya happened to be in, uh, I think it's towards mid, uh, mid mm -hmm. or end of May. So we can see that uh, the uh, customers are coming back uh, to buy. Mm -hmm. uh, but because of the control in place, of course, uh, May, we did not go into full, full purchase. Therefore, the next few months uh, in July, I think there is a uh, Haji. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we see a surge even during Haji also. Yeah, yeah. I think this uh, COVID nineteen the pandemic has uh, some oddity in some cases. There are also people with money uh, who cannot spend because they cannot travel overseas. Yeah. Uh, they cannot go anywhere and they have some money to spend and that you put you keep your money in the banks the interest rate is so low uh, there's this urge to either buy gold or actually invest in the stock market which is why our stock market is doing very well okay and record the uh, numbers now um but still how has uh, covid-19 affect you because i'm sure that a lot of people are very reluctant to go to uh, shopping malls now uh, mm -hmm. most of the shopping malls are empty especially mm -hmm. those uh, which has been uh, in fact, I have been affected. All you need is just one uh, shop assistant and then everybody stays away. Uh, how do you cope with this situation? Well, I think we, we when come to this pandemic, this, this virus is not going to, going to go away. So we, I think we have to live with it. Mm. We have to embrace it. Uh, the, after, after MCO, after when we open, actually our business was quite was actually quite encouraging. Mm -hmm. uh, the the last few months until September we are doing quite well. In fact, uh, we still have growth year on year. So I think partly because also of a higher gold price. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Also because, you know, just imagine you don't have to pay for your loans, you don't have to pay for your car, you don't have to pay for your credit cards. Yeah. And, and assuming that your salary is not affected or your job is not affected, you actually have more money to spend. Yeah. You know, right. you used to spend a lot, a lot, Malaysian used to spend a lot on traveling. Mm-hmm. And now suddenly you cannot travel. At times you cannot even travel out of your states. Yeah. So, so that is really money. I mean, if you look at it positively, mm-hmm. there is money to be spent, but it's just yeah. like what to be spent. And I feel that buying gold is a right choice. Mm. Because, you know, when you buy that piece of gold, you, again, a gold jewelry is, is a necessary that you can wear. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it also preserves the value. The money is not gone. You know, yeah. you buy other things, the money might be gone, but you yeah. buy a gold, piece of gold jewelry, the money is not gone. When you need money, you can easily sell back and get your money. Okay. Uh, how do, how is gold compared to, say, uh, uh, platinum, uh, jade, and uh, pearl, natural pearl from uh, the uh, Polynesian area, okay? Uh, what, what is the, in terms of uh, investment, uh, what would you recommend? Say platinum and of course, uh, jade. Okay. For investment, I think the status of gold as a top investment priority mm. is unchallengeable mm-hmm. due, to its, the, due to the size of the market and uh, the recognition as a store of value. Traditionally, the gold has always used as a media of exchange and, uh, and it used to be used to back US dollar. Uh, so, so I think gold as a top investment is, is, is there. It's not, it's, it's not going to change. Mm. You know, uh, platinum, on the other hand, is actually ha- have a very small market mm-hmm. in terms of demand and supply. It's the, the demand and supply are also very limited. Mm. So, and, and platinum traditionally is mainly used for automotive industry. I see. Yeah. So, so to me, any investment or in any investment, the size of the market uh, does matter. So, yeah. gold will remain a good investment. Okay. What about jade? Say again. Jade, jade. What about jade? jade. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, Jade, of course, there are, there are many, many quality to the jade. Uh, the, the, the production of uh, jade coming out from Burma is very limited now. I see. Uh, you know, they now, you know, most of the mining now today, you have to go deeper, mm. you have to invest more to get the jade and, and the, the quality might not be as good. I see. So, so, so because of the rareness, Things like jade, uh, ruby, sapphire, uh, these are the rare piece definitely price will continue to go up. Whether the pandemic, no pandemic, the price will continue to go up because of the uh, scarcity. So for collection, uh, it's really a good uh, choice to make too? Well, definitely it's a good invest, a good choice, mm. uh, but really, you know, uh, you need to there are, there are so many types of qualities. Yeah? You know, you must buy from the, the right source. And also, I, I think uh, the size of the stone, the quality of stone does matter. You know, there are so-called commercial grade that uh, most people are wearing, you know, but there are also collection grades. Okay, one more question. What would be the difference in terms of uh, cultured pearls and those that's real and natural, you know, it comes up in a different kind of very odd shape. And okay. where do this uh, genuine uh, odd shape pearls comes from? From the South Sea or where? Okay, for pearl, I think uh, there is we, we, we saw Tahiti pearl. Tahiti pearl, generally, they are black in color. Mm-hmm. Then you have, uh, you have Akoya pearl from Japan. Then you have a lot of culture pearl from China. In fact, in Sabah, we also have so-called South Sea pearl, golden color. In uh, in Bali, they, they culture, uh, they they do have they culture those pearl as well. So actually, pearl is uh, at the end of the day, to me is uh, the the luster of the of, mm-hmm. of the of the pearl, mm-hmm. the uh, the surface of the we call the skin of the pearl. You know whether it's it's clean and so forth. So so. There are really differences in, in all these pearls. Mm. Uh, you can, you know, not all, not 
one pearl is all alike when you know so okay. so every piece can come it is it's natural so whether it's culture non culture is is natural so the shape that it come out the color that it comes out depends on the water quality depends on the weather depends on uh, on luck also it to certain extent because you yeah. cannot manufacture the same as apple it is beyond your control yeah okay so but then of course for jewelry purpose you know sometimes you get a odd shape odd shape pearl but it's how you design it you know uh the 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 designer will have to play a role in making that piece attractive so doesn't mean that it's a odd shape then is mm. because it's the design a uh, jewel in jewelry the design play a important role yeah okay and of course it's uh, goes down to preference for me i like the uh, uh, pearl yes, which is in odd shape and oh. because it gives you a natural flavor to it right well, right. there's something that you, of course, you can't use the word manufactured, but when you turn, think in terms of culture, there's always this, uh, this uh, perception that it's manufactured. Right. Okay, one last question, uh, Dato, for really thank you for spending time with us. Now, you know that uh, as parents, we always like to give presents to our kids during birthdays and on special occasions. And many of these uh, birthday gifts, after a while, it disappears, or your kids do not even appreciate it. You know, they, they just chuck it away. Now, um, at least my parents did not have the foresight to uh, give me uh, blue chips counter chairs, okay, or else I'll be bearish today. Mm -hmm. And also, did they not buy enough gold for me? Okay, rather than to just give a simple uh, toy, uh, what would you recommend parents should do so that they have give something that's valuable and when they are gone, the kids can still hold on to something which is say, wow, now it's worth 10 times. What is your advice? Okay, uh, so Dr. Sri, if you are if you are talking about passing on value, uh, uh, in terms of the value of the item, of course, always go for the the red red redest possible. You know, you know whether even for diamonds, we talk about uh, things that is five carat up collection color and so forth. But I think a lot of time, you know, when we give a gift, you know, when when we receive a gift, is is the thought behind that's more important than just the value of the item. You know, something that is uh, uh, passed on from my father to me, mm. uh, the memories is more important than the value of the, the actual item. But of course, you know, that I, I see uh, that there are different stocks, there are different thoughts. You know, I got customers that say, you know, I want to buy gold bars, I give to each of my children one or two gold bars, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but we also have customers that say, you know, I like to buy diamonds, you know, uh, uh, bigger piece diamonds, so that I give each of them uh, during their wedding. You know, diamonds, if they don't like, they can reset it. The value is always there. If you don't like the design, you can reset it. Mm. So that is the beauty of it. Same thing for gemstone and jade. You know, I see a lot of customers buy jade uh, that uh, of very high quality. And uh, this, these are the things that they... They pass on, and most of the of such thing, you won't have to worry about the design, whether it will be obsolete. Then you know because you can always take out the stone and reset it. But it's the memory that counts. Yes, thank yeah. you very much, Dato, for spending time with us this evening. You have given very sound advice, and that uh, we will uh, think we will remember all the uh, the uh, tips that have been given us. And we hope that I will see you at your shop soon. I must count my money now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you very much, Dr. See you. Bye.